When everyone else was doing sexy, she did geek chic. Love Prada and love talking about it. I think that the brand and Mucha herself are quite complicated. She is a woman who's incredibly well educated. She has a doctorate in political science and was a communist and a feminist and really worked hard on behalf of women and fighting for women's rights, but still decided to work in her family business and make it into women's and men's fashion. That is something worth exploring and I think it's actually at the heart of all her clothes. She pushes boundaries, she asks important questions, she mixes the old and new, the ugly and the sublime, the original and the unexpected. And can those two things be the same? She makes you uncomfortable with her clothes, but still is able to make you want them. It's not just an intellectual exercise or an aesthetic exercise, it's still a commercial endeavor. I like that she explores when beauty is a choice. In 1998, she decided to start showing ready-to-wear. It was a really interesting time for this woman, who was quite politically motivated and serious and thoughtful, to be showing clothes in Italy. If you think about that time in fashion, it was all about Versace and Armani. It was about opulence and glamour. And Mucha didn't relate to that. That didn't speak to her. At the same time that that was going on, she started showing clothes that were inspired by workwear and uniforms. They were about utility and simplicity. Luxury was there for sure, but it was subverted. It was quiet. She intentionally pushed our boundaries and made ugly clothes used ugly colors, used ugly prints. And this was about dressing for yourself. It was a nod to vintage. It was smart girl clothes. It's not an immediate like. You don't immediately say, I want that a lot of the time, or I want to wear that, or I understand that. You have to adjust for a little bit. This is all not to say that there's never anything feminine or beautiful or sexy. She explores all of those ideas. But it's always a question of what is bourgeois? What does sexy mean? And through that, femininity can be expressed, it can be embraced, but through your own lens, by your own choice, there's a power in it. Some of my favorite moments with movie stars have been in Prada dresses. They're never expected. They're never just a simple, glamorous, sexy dress. There's always something clever. There's a colored lining that you don't expect a use of a certain kind of fabric. It could be a sickly sweet color or an unexpected color choice. They're always a little bit off. Those choices can at first, especially in our Instagram age, seem off-putting. You see the image and think, why on earth would they choose that? Maybe an hour later, maybe 10 minutes later, maybe a week later, you think, that was quite cool. That was a weird choice. There's a bravery in making that kind of choice to wear a dress that isn't immediately digestible. This is actually my very favorite Prada collection. This is Spring Summer 2001 Ready to Wear. I love the ad campaign for this collection so, so much. I love how graphic it is, how clever it is, the strange proportions, a long sleeve crop turtleneck, the clarity of color and vision. It just feels fresh. The reason I chose this particular collection, which is Autumn Winter 2013, because I think this is a collection that is really exploring bourgeois ideas and what it means to be a lady and what it means to be sexy. The cardigan under the dress, there's something wrong about it. Is she looks like maybe she's a little boozy and why does she have such a big bag and why are her colors so strange? It's a way of doing a sexy dress, a pretty day dress, but still asking a question. It's not that easy. In 1979, Mucha made her first nylon backpack. She questioned the notion of what a luxury handbag is or what a designer handbag is through material. At the time, luxury bags were leather and she visited a military grade nylon factory and she was really inspired by the fabric. It's shiny, it's tactile, it's useful, it's waterproof, it's light. She was really inspired to make a bag that she wanted to carry, a simple backpack. It's comfortable, everything could fit in it, it was waterproof. It wasn't an immediate success. The first backpack had no logo whatsoever. Later, it was embossed with the triangle, which they call a seal, not a logo. That didn't immediately come onto the nylon backpack, so it was incredibly subtle. 
The backpack is unlimed, it's very simple, and in a way, the backpack has been compared to Marcel Duchamp's fountain. So Marcel Duchamp's fountain is this utilitarian urinal raised to the level of high art, and she's taken nylon, a tent fabric, and raised it to the level of a luxury leather good for women. In the fall of 94, almost the entire ready-to-wear collection was made of nylon. That was a real turning point. That was an exciting thing. Luxury ready-to-wear really turned on its head, that this incredibly utilitarian fabric, fabric that makes tents, was making very expensive, high-end ladies' fashion. In the 90s, all the nylon pieces were really the it thing to have. They really were a symbol of great taste, sophistication, luxury. Recently, Prada has been reissuing a lot of those pieces. And the exciting thing about them is that they look new. They look cool again. And Prada has made this commitment that by the end of 2021, all of the nylon that they use will be part of this circular system. The recycled nylon is made out of used fishing nets, discarded carpet, and cutting scraps from clothing factories. And it's all put into a machine and broken down to its essential elements, and then it can be remade into purified, totally clean, new nylon. The fabric can be recycled endlessly with no compromise of quality. The idea is a return of value to society. It's pushing the boundary again. It's showing us what's possible. It's showing us a new way to think about things. This bag is like the cutest thing in the world. I love that it's this like saccharin baby pink color. But the shape is so 90s and so classic. It really reminds me of all the photos you see of movie stars going to premieres in their own clothes before stylists were a thing. You can just picture like J-Lo and Alicia Silverstone and Lil' Kim with these bags. Whenever I see these, I think of all those crazy 90s fashion. Britney Spears wore so much Prada during this era. The bucket hat, this color is great. It's just a simple utilitarian thing, but because it's got the Prada seal on it, because it's this re-nylon, it's quite cool and it's worth something. It feels like something more than just a regular bucket hat. So this is an example of Prada doing sexy. It's all nylon. It's little running shorts and a cute bra. It feels incredibly cool and very now, but also quite retro. And because it's Prada, it doesn't feel cheap and it doesn't feel gimmicky or overtly sexy. It feels clever. What you see on the back of this bra is this utility clip. To me, that references the backpack. Like when I see that, I always think of the Prada backpack. That sort of military feel, questioning. What is luxury? What's beautiful? What's appropriate in a designer garment? Something like this is really classic Prada. There's like a handbag attached to an off-the-shoulder, almost corseted top. The top on its own is quite sexy. It's wrapped, so it's flattering to the bodice. Your shoulders are exposed. There's a bra strap showing. There's this classic silhouette. If you want to look like a sexy woman, you wear an A-line skirt and an off-the-shoulder top, and you'll look attractive. But by putting this giant nylon zipper pack on the front, it asks the question, what's a sexy top? What have you got in that pocket? Why is it there? It's all sort of Prada's way of winking at you. And then it's wrapped with this giant strap. You think of military stuff. It's a metal clip. Like, why would you do that? Who would think to do that? That's not the right way to do things, but it's an interesting way to do things. Here we have an example of Prada's take on the puffer. This is a re-nylon product. It's environmentally friendly, it's circular. This is somebody's old rug made into a chic coat. I love that it's sort of an old-fashioned men's overcoat slash dressing gown slash puffer coat. It's more of a concept of a jacket. It's almost like a silly blow-up outfit. Because of that, it feels smart, but you can tell it's also lightweight, easy to travel with, water repellent. It's all these practical things as well. So as you can see, the codes of this house run through 
almost all of the designs. You can see where the foundation came from, where the original idea sprang from, and you can see it run throughout their product. I think nylon is so interesting in Prada because of the contradictions it represents. I love that it felt so modern when it came out, and it's continuing to feel modern now because of the way they're dealing with the circular regeneration of recycled nylon. Thanks so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe, like, follow, ring the bell, and leave any questions or ideas in the comments. Bye.